Hello and welcome to today's episode. This episode deals with the concept of plant layout. I am Dr. Harshia Hussain, PhD in Human Resource Management and teaching in the Department of Commerce and Business Studies, Jamia Millia Islamia University, New Delhi. So let us start with the meaning of plant layout. Plant layout refers to the physical arrangement of various facilities like equipments, materials, manpower, etc. on the factory floor in such a manner so as to achieve the right quantity and quality of output at the minimum possible cost. Plant layout begins with the design of the factory building and goes up to the location and movement of work. All the facilities like equipments, raw materials, machinery, tools, fixtures, workers, etc. are given a proper place. According to James Lundy, it identically involves the allocation of a space and the arrangement of equipment in such a manner that overall costs are minimized. According to Wainel, a good layout results in comforts, convenience, appearance, safety and profits. A poor layout results in congestion, waste, frustration and inefficiency. According to Shubin, John A. and Madihim H., plant layout in a narrower sense can be defined as the analysis and arrangement of equipment, work centers and the floor areas for the purpose of achieving an efficiently functioning floor plan for the manufacture of a given product or the supplying of a given service. The following are the objectives of the plant layout. First one, to ensure efficient use of the cubic space, that is length, width and height. Second one, to minimize cost of production. Third one, to minimize materials handling and transportation. Fourth one, to minimize the movements of the workers. Fifth one, to maximize convenience and safety of workers. Sixth one, to ensure efficient control over the various processes of production. First one, easy movement of materials. A good plant layout allows easy movement of materials throughout the plant at the desired speed with the lowest cost. Second one, efficient utilization of resources. A good layout provides efficient utilization of men and machinery by avoiding delays and bottlenecks. Third one, facilitates planning. A good layout facilitates effective planning, supervision and control of manufacturing operations. Fourth one, facilitates economy. A good layout facilitates economical use of production and storage. Fifth one, minimizes material handling cost. A good layout minimizes material handling cost. Sixth one, ensures safety. A good layout ensures higher safety and improved working conditions for workers. Seventh one, reduces maintenance costs. A good layout reduces the installation and maintenance cost due to efficient routing of services. Eighth one improves quality. A good layout leads to improvement in the quality of output. Ninth one increases efficiency. A good layout increases efficiency and provides improved product quality with reduced capital cost. The symptoms of poor plant layout are first one, a poor layout 
causes delays and work stoppages in manufacturing process. Second one, slow movement of materials through the plant. Third one, accumulation of work in progress between processes. Fourth one, high materials handling and transportation cost. Fifth one, underutilization of machines and workers, that is too much idle time. Now we will see the different types of plant layout. First one, product layout. Second one, process layout. Third one, fixed position layout. Fourth one, group layout. Product layout refers to the system where machines and equipments are arranged in the sequence of manufacturing operations required for the product. In product layout, the materials move from one workstation to another in a sequence without any backtracking of materials. It is called line layout because machines are arranged in a straight line. This type of layout is preferred for continuous production which involves a continuous flow of in-process material towards the finished product stage. Examples of product layout are automobile assembly plants and food processing chains. The advantages of a product layout are, first one, there is automatic material handling and lesser material handling movements under product layout. Second one, there is a smooth and uninterrupted operation free from bottlenecks. Third one, there is a continuous flow of work which permits mechanized handling of materials. Fourth one, there is lesser investment in inventory and work in progress. Fifth one, it shortens manufacturing or processing time. Sixth one, it ensures simple and effective inspection of work and thereby simplifies production control. Seventh one, it ensures optimum use of floor space and there is less congestion of work in the process. The disadvantages of a product layout are, first one, it requires heavy initial capital investment in special purpose machines. Second one, there are heavy overhead charges. Third one, it is difficult to increase production beyond the capacities of the production lines. Fourth one, there is a lesser flexibility of operations as a change in product involves major changes in layout. Fifth one, as the entire production is the result of the joint efforts of all operations in the line, it is difficult to implement the individual schemes. Sixth one, breakdown of one machine results in serious work stoppage of entire line of machines. However, product layout is suitable under the following conditions. First one, when there is mass production of standardized products. Second one, when there is simple and repetitive manufacturing process. Third one, when the operation time for different processes is more or less equal. Fourth one, when there is a stable demand for products. Fifth one, when there is a continuous supply of materials. Process layout is a system where separate departments are established for each specialized operation of production and machines relating to that function are assembled there. It is also known as functional layout since machines are located together according to their functions. For example, all lathe machines are placed in the lathe department. All the drilling machines are kept in the drilling department. All the miling machines in the welding department and so on.
The advantages of process layout are, first one, process layout requires lower initial capital investment in machines and equipment because general purpose machines are relatively low cost than the specialized machines. Second one, there is high degree of machine utilization as a machine is not tied to a single product. Third one, under process layout, better and efficient supervision is possible because of specialization in operation. Fourth one, the breakdown of one machine does not interrupt the entire production flow. Fifth one, it allows for greater flexibility and scope for expansion. Sixth one, under process layout, setup and maintenance cost are low. Seventh, overhead cost are relatively low. Process layout suffers from the following drawbacks. Number one, there is a high material handling cost since raw material has to move long distances for getting processed to finished goods. Second one, process layout results in high labor cost because it requires more skilled labor. Third one, it requires more frequent inspection resulting in high cost of supervision. Fourth one, production planning and control becomes difficult. Fifth one, it requires more floor space because a separate department is established for each product. Sixth one, inventory investment is usually high and requires greater storage space. Process layout is suitable in case of the following. First one, when products are not standardized. Second one, when there are frequent changes in the design and the style of the product. Third one, when machines are very expensive. Fourth one, when the production is done in a small quantity. A stationary layout is a system where the product remains fixed and men, machines and components moved to that location. This is also known as fixed position layout. This type of layout is used when the materials being processed are large, very heavy and difficult to move. For example, shipbuilding, locomotive manufacturing, aircraft manufacturing uses a static product layout. The advantages of a stationary layout are first one this layout of operations is flexible in nature and can absorb any change in product and processes second one the order of operations can be changed on account of unavailability or delay in materials third one it requires less floor space because machines and equipment are in moving position and there is no need of fixing them Fourth one, this type of layout is considered economical as it reduces the cost of labor. The disadvantages of fixed position layout are, first one, it requires higher capital investment as compared to product and process layout. Investment in men, materials and machines is made at a higher cost because of large number of assignments. Second one, this type of layout is not suitable for manufacturing small products in large quantities. Group layout is a combined form of product layout and process layout. Generally, the three types of layout often do not exist in their original form. Mostly, a combination of layout is used in producing the goods. A process layout is combined with the product layout. Combination layout uses the advantages of the different types of layout. For example, manufacturing of watches, refrigerators and automobiles uses a combination layout. Process layout is used for producing various parts 
and subcomponents while for assembling the various components into a finished product. A product layout is used. Let's take a look at the comparison between plant layout, process layout and stationary layout. Basis of comparison, product layout, process layout, stationary layout. The following principles should be followed while designing the layout of a plant. First one, principle of minimum movement. It implies minimum movement of men and materials. Next is principle of flow. It implies continuous movement of materials. The layout should allow for easy movement of materials without interruptions. Next is principle of a space. It implies that the space should be effectively utilized. Next is principle of safety. The layout should provide safety and comfort to the workers. Principle of flexibility. The layout should be flexible enough to allow changes in future whenever necessary. Next is principle of minimum investment. It implies that layout should involve minimum investment and optimum utilization of available facilities. Next is principle of integration. It implies that all the facilities should be fully integrated so as to maximize efficiency and minimize cost of production. The factors affecting plant layout are first one nature of the product. The nature of the product to be manufactured affects the layout of the plant. A product layout is best suitable for the manufacturing of light and standardized products, whereas a stationary layout is suitable for the manufacturing of heavy and bulky products. Second one, volume of production. Volume of production also affects the type of layout. Product layout is preferred when standardized products are to be manufactured on a large scale, whereas process layout is suitable in case of custom-made products. Third one is nature of plant location. The size, shape and topography of the site at which the plant is located affect the plant layout. For instance, plant site influences the type of building mode of transport and the scope of expansion which in turn influences the plant layout. Fourth one, type of industry. The nature and the type of production process have a significant influence on the plant layout. A product layout is suitable in case of continuous process industry whereas process layout is appropriate for the intermittent production. Fifth one is spatial requirements. The spatial needs for machines, material handling, equipment and available floor space have a considerable influence on the plant layout. Spatial requirements also depend upon the position and needs of the workers. Sixth one, type of machine and equipment. The various machines and equipment needed for production differ in terms of weight, speed, space, storage and material handling requirements. Therefore, in planning layout, these factors should be duly considered. As for example, heavy equipment must be located on the floor 
that can bear the load. Equipment that vibrates in operation may be placed on a ground floor. Seventh one, human factor and working conditions. A special consideration should be given for the safety and comforts of the workers while planning a layout. The layout should provide for basic amenities such as provision of restrooms, drinking water, proper washrooms and other services. The following techniques are used for designing the layout of a plant. First one, charts and diagrams. Various charts and diagrams are used to achieve work simplification. They are used for summarizing and analyzing production process and procedures. It includes the preparation of the following types of charts. First one, flow diagram. It shows the sequence of operations in the manufacturing process. It is a sketch of the floor plan used to analyze the effectiveness of the arrangement of production facilities. It depicts the physical movement of materials through the plant. Second one, flow process charts. This chart gives a picture of the graphic summary of all the activities taking place on the production floor. This chart helps to find out as to where operations can be eliminated, rearranged, combined, simplified or subdivided for greater economy. It helps in identifying inflexible processes. Third one, operation process charts. It subdivides the process into its separate operations and inspections. An operation process chart may be necessary when a variety of parts and products are manufactured, which follow different parts across several floor areas. Second one, machine tool record card. This card helps to provide information necessary for the placement and layout of equipment. The cards are prepared separately for each machine. The information given on these cards include facts about the machine, such as capacity of the machine, space occupied, power requirements, handling devices required and dimensions. Third one is templates. A template is a virtual picture of the layout. It is the drawing of a machine or tool cut out from the sheet of paper. It is a flat piece prepared by cutting a metal or a plastic block. Templates representing machines, tools, furnaces, ovens, bins, trucks, etc are then laid out on the floor plan according to the sequence indicated on the operation process chart and the layout plan prepared by the engineers. It is an important technique because it eliminates unnecessary handlings, minimizes backtracking of materials, makes the mechanical handling possible and allows flexibility to meet future changes in the production requirements. Fourth one is scale models. These models are small replicas of machines and equipment. These are three dimensional models and indicate the production process on a small scale. With scale models, it is possible to move tiny figures of men and machines around in miniature factors. Scale models are constructed from cardboard, wood, sheet, plastic or metal. These are used for complex layouts involving costly initial investments. These are helpful in determining the space required by equipment items and in detecting weaknesses for revision of plans. Now let's take a quick look at what we have discussed in this episode. In this episode, we have learned the meaning of plant layout, objectives of plant layout, advantages of a good layout, symptoms of a poor layout, types of layout, that is product layout, process layout, stationary layout, group layout, comparison of different types of layout, principles of plant layout, factors affecting plant layout and techniques of plant layout. 
Plant layout refers to the physical arrangement of various facilities like equipment, materials, manpower, etc. on the factory floor in such a manner so as to achieve the right quantity and quality of output at the minimum possible cost. There are four types of plant layout. A. Product layout, B. Process layout, C. Fixed position layout and D. Group layout. Product layout refers to the system where machines and equipments are arranged in the sequence of the manufacturing operations required for the product. The materials are moved from one work station to another in a sequence without any backtracking of materials. This type of layout is preferred for continuous production as it involves a continuous flow of in-process material towards the finished product stage. Automobile assembly plants and food processing chains are the examples of product layout. Product layout is suitable when there is mass production of standardized products. Process layout refers to the system where machines are located together according to their functions. In other words, separate departments are established for each specialized operation of production and machines relating to that function are assembled there. Process layout is suitable when products are not standardized and when there are frequent changes in design and the style of the product. Fixed position layout is a type of production system where the product remains fixed and men, machines and components move to that location. This type of layout is used when the materials being processed are large, very heavy and difficult to move. For example, shipbuilding, locomotive manufacturing, aircraft manufacturing uses a static product layout. Group layout is a combined form of product layout and process layout. Various types of techniques are used for designing the layout of a plant. It involves flow diagram, flow process charts, operation process charts, machine tool record card, templates and scale models. The principles while designing the layout of a plant are A. Principle of minimum movement B. Principle of flow C. Principle of space D. Principle of safety E. Principle of flexibility F. Principle of minimum investment and G. Principle of integration The factors affecting plant layout are nature of the product, volume of production, nature of plant location, type of industry, spatial requirements, type of machine and equipment, human factor and working conditions. So that is all for today. Hope you have understood. We will see you with another topic in the next episode. Till then, take care. Goodbye.